start. They're shooting our nipples. Well, I don't think that you can go straight in that you have to be in. Hey, what's the, uh... What's Jordan Young, Alpha Battery, 4th and 133rd Field Artillery Unit, uh, and my MOS is 13 Juliet, this is a Fire Direction Center uh, Specialist. Uh, today's event was us bringing our HIMARS out here and shooting live rockets downrange to uh, verify our, uh, our HIMARS can shoot. I'll just make sure our equipment is uh, mission capable and ready to go. It's always good to get out here and shoot our equipment, making sure it works. We're kind of the ones that create the fire missions to send down to the HIMARS. We check safety, create the fire missions, pick the rounds they shoot, and then send it to the launchers. You know, you don't want to hit something you're not trying to hit with a pretty high explosive rocket. So, I know it was a good day. That's about it. So what took place today for Task Force Voight, which is uh, this platoon from Atlas Battery, was a Table 12 or platoon level live fire qualification to help them continue to build their readiness. So you saw the platoon leader, platoon sergeant, battery commander, and, and uh, company out here uh, executing a live fire here in Camp Tapa. This is the, the end point of really two to three weeks of work. So this platoon has gone from Table 1, which is individual crew serve qualifications, all the way up until platoon. The next step in this is for them to bring the entire battery together and have a live fire qualification for their battery. So no small feat for Captain Callahan, First Sergeant Rodriguez, uh, in taking these men and women to where they can successfully upload, receive missions, process it, apply a gunnery solution, and then send rockets downrange timely and accurate so kudos to them great work by that battery command team I think I was just happy to be out here today to work with Captain Callahan first Sergeant Rodriguez myself Sergeant Major uh, Lloyd Rhodes my CSM we always like to come out and support folks who are part of the task force and so anything we can do to help we had great interaction with our embassy partners here today ambassador the deputy chief of mission were out uh, to observe uh, so there's good relationship between military and State Department inside of the country as well so to have the U.S. ambassador
ambassador to Estonia here really highlights uh, what he's talked about, right? So his, his video is matching his audio. Defense is a priority for him. U.S. forces in the region are a priority for him and security to Estonia. That's something that he's in consistent dialogue with, with his Ministry of Foreign Affairs counterparts. And so to have him out here engaging with men and women in uniform, engaging with leadership, not just U.S. forces, but also the Estonian forces, also the Ford forces from Great Britain, also the forces from France, uh, just, you know, underpins what our senior leaders have been talking about. If we are here to support and reassure our allies, it doesn't get much better than that. You know, our overall mission here is to, number one, reassure our allies, but also to serve as a deterrence. And one way to do that is by demonstrating that we have combat credible forces. And so from a fire support perspective, this unit right here going through platoon level qualifications demonstrates uh, their capacity, their capability, and everyone gets a chance to take notice of that. So it's a little twofold. There's, there's readiness for the 1st Cavalry Division, for Task Force Red Team, for Task Force Voigt, but there's also uh, reassurance with the French, with Estonia, with Great Britain, who are all here today to take part in, to witness, to follow along with us as we continue to build our relationships, to strengthen our bonds, and to help this region, particularly here in Estonia, uh, continue to build itself up as a national defense force. My full name is uh, Biel Jose Cantu. I'm a specialist. I am a 13 Mike High Mars crew member. So as 13 Mikes, uh, we operate the HIMAR. Uh, some of those are assigned to the launcher and some of those are assigned to an ammunition platoon. We take care of bringing the pods to the launcher and taking care of the dunnage. Today we'll be doing a live fire. So we'll be uh, launching some of our ripper rounds. These are our training rounds that we utilize to imitate our Mike 31s and Mike 30s. And essentially we do it as a training exercise. Just seeing everybody come out and uh, see what we're about is, is always fun. Interoperability is the main uh, thing here. We, we all have uh, role to play. Doing these training exercises are useful. It makes us more proficient, keeps us on our toes, but more importantly, it allows our hosts and NATO uh, partners to uh, see what we can bring to the table and the value in uh, long range precision fires. When I first came to 13 Mike, I was actually a combat medic and I reclassed into this MOS. I didn't really know anything about artillery or the artillery branch coming into it. And the more I learned about it, the more I'm intrigued. There's a lot of camaraderie that comes with it, and knowing that we're an asset um, just makes me feel valuable, it makes me feel part of a team, and it makes me feel like uh, we make a difference every day. Ensuring their equipment works is, is vital. Uh, obviously PMCS, all that good stuff, but also doing the things like our live training ensures that all the logistical aspects within the launcher itself are working properly. Rehearsing it and above that, just making sure we're proficient on it. We need to be uh, combat ready, mission capable at all times, and this is why we're here.